thank you for coming out. Thank you in, for inviting me to Seattle. Thank you for inviting me to Washington. Um, when you speak, you tell your audience, we are all Trayvon. How so? I just sincerely believe that any one of our young people, our teenagers, could have been walking home from the store and that uh, someone could have perceived them a certain way or had some mixed up ideas in their head and decide to follow them and chase them and pursue them and, and murder them. So I, I, I just don't think that, you know, it was by coincidence that it was Trayvon. I think that it could have been anyone. And so um, I bring that idea to the table because I want our young people to be aware. I want our young people to be more knowledgeable about what's going on in their community and communities across the United States as well. This tragedy, it, it thrust you into a role of leadership. This was not something that I would have applied for. This is not something that I would have wanted for my life or for my son's life or for my family. Um, but um, as, as you know, things happen, um, I'm here and I have accepted the position now. Um, and I decided that I can do more than just stay home and cry. Um, a lot of times you don't hear about the Trayvon Martins and the Tamar Rices and the uh, Jordan Davis and Oscar Grants and Kendrick Johnson and the Sean Bells and uh, the Eric Garners. You don't hear some of those names and you see certain people on the forefront, but it's a lot more people, it's a lot more families that, that are being affected by senseless gun violence. And I think the ones that are able to speak and have the opportunity to speak are obligated to talk about those cases, are obligated to make sure that those cases are getting proper notice and attention as well. Your mission? That's your mission now? Too? Well, that's just one of my missions. I mean, um, we created the Trayvon Martin Foundation, and that foundation was to channel our anger, to channel our, our hurt and our pain, and just, just the fact that the justice system did not work in our case. We wanted to do something to make a change in society, to make a change in the United States, to make a change internationally as well. And so we wanted to do something where we could connect families that are victims of senseless gun violence. So, so we can try to change laws that, that are unfair, so that we can try to change minds mindsets because even though you might change laws if you don't change the mindset of those people that are applying the laws then the same thing is going to continue to happen we're going to get somebody that shot and killed and then the person who shot and killed that person won't be held accountable because the law is not being applied fairly federal authorities say he had body armor and six guns with him including pistols and a rifle Gun violence today and the fact that as we speak we just had a tragedy in Roseburg, Oregon where a mass shooting. What needs to change in our society? We have to come together collectively. We have to come up with some type of plan to get rid of all of these weapons that are unregistered, that, that, that are sitting around, that, that people are just using um, carelessly. We, we, we have to know the meaning of senseless gun violence, something that could be prevented. We have to understand that, and we have to understand how it impacts the brothers and sisters of those family members that have been shot and killed. And my heart goes out to those students. My heart goes out to the fact that they had to experience that, they had to go through that, and that that's gonna be an ongoing healing process for them. They're never gonna forget that their fellow student was shot and killed. They're never going to forget that. And it's, it's gonna be a certain level of discomfort at the school because of it. George Zimmerman obviously got off of this case. Uh, the Justice Department didn't bring any civil rights charges against him. Since then, he's had a number of run-ins and incidents with the law. How tough is it for you to still see all that? My focus is not the person who murdered my son. My focus is still my son and my older son. Um, and so I stay focused on what I need to. I stay focused on my foundation. And I just let the negative stuff be the negative stuff.
I don't really concentrate on what somebody is doing because it would take the focus off what I need to be focused on. And to answer your question um, to another point, um, that situation with my son, um, the incident, the actual incident that occurred, I gave that to God and I left it with him. And I refuse to take it back and say, God, you're not moving fast enough. Let me handle this myself. And so that's why I have a peace of mind, because I know I have given it to God and that God will handle it. So I don't need to do, Sabrina does not need to do anything else. Many people point at Trayvon as really the beginning of Black Lives Matter and that movement. Do you feel that way? Um. No, I, I think that black lives, uh, that, that the Trayvon Martin uh, tragedy reunited or reignited um, people's thoughts and what they were thinking. It was always a Black Lives Matter movement because civil rights has been going on forever. And so I think it's always been a movement, but I think it just reignited the fire that we need to do something about the black lives that were being lost and nobody was being held accountable for them. I don't know how we got to be a country that is so violent that because of someone's color of their skin, because of their sexual orientation, because of their religion or their educational background or their status in life, people hate you so much that they want to harm you. They hate you so much that they want to kill you. How did we become a society such as that? How did we get there? How do you keep yourself going? You seem determined. Well, I was broken, and so let me say that. I, I, I was uh, uh, broken. I was on the floor. I was crying. I was disappointed. I was uh, in a state of depression. I was, I was losing the fight of the tragedy for my son, as any parent would. You're seeing a product of what God has put back together because I was broken. And I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not afraid, you know, when I cry, I cry. I'm a parent. I'm a mom. I hurt. At the same time, I, know, I knew that I needed to do more. And so this is my more. This is what I'm doing to contribute, to, to make sure that my son did not die in vain. This is to make sure that I bring awareness to social injustice, to human rights, to, to all of the racial profiling and discrimination. This is what I've decided to do, to do my part to give back to this country.